Hi, I'm going to do a little talk through of my robotic bartender project that I made here. I'll start up here at the nozzle, a 3D printed body uh, that takes in four different tubes. Uh, the inside of these holes actually have some ridges to make a nice tight seal there. The top unscrews so that you can clean it from the top down if need be, and then there's a nozzle on the bottom to help direct the fluid. This originally was a metallic uh, speed pour spout from like an actual uh, bartending situation, but the uh, opening was too small to handle the volume of fluid coming from the, the pumps. Um, it's about 35 milliliters per second uh, per pump, so I had to make something a little bit bigger there. Uh, it's all mounted on some um, kind of stock aluminum here that I bought from the local hardware store, as are a lot of the other pieces. I did splurge on some nice extruded 2020 aluminum framing here uh, just to cut corners and uh, make things a little bit more rigid. Uh, the arm that this is mounted on um, comes from some inspiration of a desk lamp and microphone stand. Um, it's got a couple of benefits. You can size it up uh, all the way down to a small teacup or up to a large beer stein. Uh, and another feature of this is it doesn't really change the angle of that pour spout as you move up and down. Uh, and then lastly, it allowed me to put these springs back here to help give some support so it stays in the position that um, you move it in. The tubes come back through another 3D printed uh, holder here just to manage it and keep it nice. Uh, here's another one mounted back there before we get to the actual motors on the back. The tubes themselves, continuing on for a second, go up to a coupler here, uh, which are just some 3D printed parts so that I could switch tube sizing there, uh, mainly because I ran out of this small tube and had this big stuff on hand, but also so that uh, I could make this cap that goes into the bottle. So even when the tube is in there, it's not really like just exposed to the air. Um, this works well with small uh, bottles and then for larger bottles like juice and stuff, there's another adapter that this can slide into to make a tighter seal. The motors themselves here are uh, little peristolic pumps. They're about $14 online uh, and that included um, a one amp 12 volt power supply for each, some mounting hardware uh, and this tubing that uh, you saw up here. Inside the 3D printed cases of um, the back of the motors, that's where the uh, exposed flanges were. Um, and I had to add a capacitor across those terminals to help reduce the electromagnetic interference from the commutator brushes, uh, speaking back to the Arduino. And there's also like a flyback snubber diode that I put across each of those to help deal with the voltage spike that occurs when the motor turns off and the magnetic field and in the induction coils collapses. Up on top here, there's a little uh, bell which rings once the drink is done. And this is just one of those uh, kind of shot bells that you would normally tap on top. I took it apart and just kept the bell part, but included uh, an uh, electromagnet in there, a five volt solenoid um, that strikes the bell once it's all completed. Moving around to the front of the robot, take a look at the control panel and then we'll look inside. Um, I went with this clear uh, laser cut acrylic housing because I figured this is one of those situations where you might want to see how the sausage is made. Uh, on the front, we've got the execute button, uh, which makes everything run. There's a power switch, which is for the 12 volt DC. There's a selector knob. Uh, when it's on the drink setting, you press the button, it'll run through the routine to mix up the drink. We also have the option to manually flush um, the lines. So just turning the motors on, um, if you want to load them up with the fluid before mixing the drink or clean them all out uh, with water when you're, when you're done. Uh, these uh, sliding potentiometers down here, uh, one kilo ohm each, uh, are for tweaking the ingredient levels or basically how, how long the peristolic pumps are on for. Right in the middle is kind of the predetermined uh, correct amount uh, determined in the code, whether that's, you know, one and a half ounces or two ounces of an ingredient. Uh, but then you can go 50% above or 50% below that, depending on your personal taste or if the motors are starting to um, act weird on the fly or get clogged with juice pulp. Then there's a plate on the front here, which can be swapped out pretty easily uh, when those ingredients change as well, uh, keeping it nice and flexible. Up on top here, uh, there's a agitator plate. Um, so it's got a... <laughs> Uh, little cam uh, that I 3D printed in there. And this plate actually just sits on top of that cam, which would uh, spin around from this DC motor. And this just slits right on top of the shaft that comes through the acrylic there. 
Uh, and so this design keeps everything um, nice and uh, dry on the inside, but also allows it to be wiped off uh, when drips and spills do occur. The top is not actually secured. Uh, it just pops right off. It's got a lip around the edge as well as an overhang uh, to further keep liquid from potentially getting into the electronics. The uh, back here, we see a large uh, 12 volt uh, AC DC converter, which uh, switching power supply keeps the temperature pretty cool inside the enclosure. Uh, haven't had it overheat yet um, and takes that wall AC current, brings it down to a uh, 12 volt DC uh, with 10 amps. So I wanted to go with something pretty high there because there's five big motors running at uh, one time and uh, still wanted to have enough for the Arduino left over. The 12 volts um, first comes out and runs to the front here with the power switch. Uh, when then that goes on, it comes back and splits into two places. One of them is this step down converter, which takes the 12 volts and makes a five volt power supply uh, with three amps to run the Arduino uh, and all the other sensors that are on the uh, same logic level. It also goes off to the relay board down below. Uh, it takes five volts to power the coils on there. Uh, and it also goes to the solenoid that's up on the bell uh, because that's five volts. Uh, the other place the 12 volt goes uh, instead of that step down converter is to the relay uh, where it can be routed to all of the 12 volt motors that we have. And there's five of them, four on the back and one for the stir plate. Um, the um, Arduino itself I had hoped to keep uh, accessible so that I could swap out the recipe fairly easily and I had bought a 90 degree angle converter for this plug so that I could still access it but ended up being too tight. So after the fact I went in and uh, cut out a hole on the side here uh, that can be capped up uh, that would allow me to plug the cable in here without disassembling everything uh, but still keeping this nicely weatherproof when it's not in use. Um, there's a few clutches on here. I had to add this cap back here to quiet out some of the noise uh, when the motors kicked on and off so that it didn't crash the um, Arduino. And there's a snubber motor here, a uh, snubber diode, uh, that's actually for this front DC motor. Um, I incorrectly assumed that there was one in the casing underneath the gears, uh, and it wasn't, so that was still causing problems. And instead of taking this out and adding it closer to the motor, I just put it back here across its leads.